So let's wrap up with some <clears throat> tips on directing attention in data visualization. So we're just going to review and kind of clarify some of the different rules that we're applying for um, thinking about the most effective visualizations that we can make. Uh, and so in those line charts and those bar charts, we saw that the length and 2D position um, were more helpful than things like areas. Um, so the pie chart and the, area, the visual area of these slices was not as effective as trying to visually just compare the heights or the lengths of the bars or the columns in those charts, um, or just when a line is going up or down. Like our eye can immediately follow a line and see that it's increasing or decreasing um, versus trying to understand when the relative size of a pie slice is getting larger or smaller from one pie chart to the next. And then we also saw that um, using shades of the same color was a lot cleaner and less confusing than um, using different colors um, for the same type of data. So if I was conveying completely different pieces of information, then I might want different colors to clarify what's what. But when I'm comparing um, kind of crime, rate, crime rates um, by type, or if I'm comparing amounts of um, unemployment rates, then having multiple colors for different levels was just kind of confusing. Um, so width and uh, size, so like we talked about the area with the pie chart, is less helpful. But that also comes into play a little bit with kind of a column versus um, a, a bar chart um, such situation. So let's think of an example um, where we're using width and size in a way um, to convey information that isn't especially helpful for the viewer um, and that our mind isn't able to process very well. Um, so this is an example from uh, The Economist, and it's a char chart that's, I don't know, kind of cutely titled Bruce Gain. Uh, and so it's comparing the different um, actors who have played Batman over the course of um, the different iterations that Batman has been in TV and comics and movies and what have you. Uh, and so what they're trying to do is they're, for each um, kind of portrayer of Batman and um, the comic book, they're portraying the, the both the weight and the height. So they're portraying two pieces of information and the height of the Batman is given on this axis right here. And that's um, just kind of the visual um, vertical distance for the size of the Batman. And then the weight is being portrayed with the width. And so um, compared to the comic book Batman, um, the Adam West Batman looks pretty similar. Uh, Michael Keaton, I had no idea, is um, like a real shorty. Um, who knew that Ben Affleck was this tall? I did not. Um, Lego Batman is uh, quite petite. Um, and so these heights we can really easily see. So we can just look across this um, axis here and we can compare it to um, the values on these guidelines and see who is the tallest Batman, who is the shortest Batman. Um, but the weights are actually not so clear. Um, so when we look across here, it's not like they're on the same dimension and we can see high-low. Um, instead, we're trying to keep in mind some of, like a distance here, and then is that shorter or wider than a distance here? Um, and our brains just aren't as good at um, making that kind of a comparison. So we're not as good at going between vertical and horizontal for our comparisons. Uh, and that's something that um, we just call the vertical and horizontal uh, illusion. So our, our brains are looking at these two lines, trying to understand um, how they might compare to each other. And it looks like this one's longer, um, at least to me. I look at this and I see a really long line here and a short line here, like an upside down um, capital T. But if we were to measure the lengths of these lines, um, they're actually the same length. Um, this line is the same length as this line, um, but because this one's horizontal, my brain isn't as um, readily able to process that size compared to the size of the vertical one. Uh, and so when we tilt them and we've got all of these um, horizontal lines that are now vertical and the horizontal sizes are all kind of across from each other so we can look across and compare them as though they were heights instead of widths. Um, we're much more um, able to tell that this comic book Batman is actually wider than the Adam West Batman and that one's wider than the Michael Keaton Batman. Um, and so now it's easier to see that the Michael Keaton Batman weighed quite a bit less than um, the, the kind of fictional Batman of the comic book 
Um, and even though we could already tell that he was shorter, the difference in the weight was harder to tell. Uh, and so it's important to keep that in mind. And um, why would that be? So for one of the participation questions on Canvas, why is it important to keep in mind the vertical and horizontal illusion? Um, is it because we make predictable mistakes when trying to compare the length of a horizontal line to the length of a vertical line? Uh, is it because it's hard for humans to accurately compare the length of two vertical lines to each other? Uh, or is it because a horizontal line looks a lot longer than the vertical line of the same length? Or lastly, is it all of these things? Do we do all of these things? Um, so it was not uh, C, because the um, horizontal and vertical illusion was that the vertical one looks longer. So that's not it. Um, it's not B, um, because we actually could very easily see the difference in the heights among the Batman, uh, Bat Batmen. Uh, and then the last one, A, yes, that's it. Um, we predictably make mistakes when we're trying to compare the horizontal and vertical line. We predictably think that the vertical one is longer than the horizontal one, even when they're the same length. Um, so the answer to that participation, participation question is A. Um, all right, so what about um, when we're visually trying to make a comparison in a table? So just like in our um, triad exercises, we're not always using data visualization, even though that's um, kind of the goal and that's a lot easier. Um, sometimes what we want to provide is some really pre um, precise information. We want to provide a lot of the details about the exact numbers of things and rates of things um, in a concise way. Um, and so when we're trying to provide that information, a table is often the best way to do that. Um, and so how do we direct attention in a table instead of in a graph? Um, so when we're doing that, keep in mind that it's easier to compare columns of numbers um, than it is rows. So looking at um, the data from the lab quiz and the try it, if we've got a table arranged so that we've got um, the categories for the type of student, a California student, a non-California resident student, uh, a non-US re uh, resident, and an unknown residency status. We've got these um, categories down here, and we've got the rows, uh, or I'm sorry, the columns as years. Then when we're visually doing a comparison, the eye tends to look down the columns and compare those numbers to one another um, much more easily than, oops, okay. Sorry. Um, so the eye tends to look down the columns of numbers much more quickly than it looks um, uh, the numbers across in rows. So in this particular table, um, the eye is going down the column of numbers and it looks like, okay, wow, 28,000 Californians versus only 1,700 other states, uh, only 1,900 um, outside the U.S. And so we're like, wow, okay, in every year, there are a lot more Californians than there are people in other states. Okay, if we arrange the table differently, so if we've now got um, the years down the rows and then the residency types across the columns, um, then when we're looking down the columns, what we're comparing is how many California residents there were in 2011 to 2012, 13, etc. And so now we're looking down the columns and we're seeing, hey, the number of uh, California residents is mm, pretty stable. So there was an increase from 2011 to 2014 of, you know, less than 800 out of, you know, 28, more than 28,000. There's been a bit of an increase and it wasn't huge. Um, but then when we're looking down the other columns, we can see, whoa, um, for students from outside the U.S., there was a huge increase. So there was 1,800 in 2011 compared to 36, 3,700 uh, in 2014. It was an almost doubling. Uh, and so when we're looking at the table this way, we're looking at the growth over time, not um, the numbers of students in the different uh, categories at the same point in time. Uh, so keep in mind that when you want the comparison um, to go th this way, then you want um, the comparison to be down the columns. Um, so that's the main story that you're trying to convey there.